So I'm wondering what's kind of the process uh, from, if you're willing to share and go there, from when you found out um, to when you, uh, you know, got your next opportunity and any advice that you would have uh, for learners along the way that will likely face something like this in the future? I would actually have to go back to the time before. Uh, and the reason I say that is um, I was in the last role I had very public in the, in the job I was doing and was, I uh, was told, uh, it was given a very rare opportunity that seldom happens in broadcasting, which is yes, your job is over, but you're here for another two and a half weeks. Uh, and that, that doesn't happen very often in that type of uh, situation. Usually your last shift was the one you just did. Uh, which again, I say happened to me prior to that. Uh, when uh, the last layoff in uh, October, November of uh, 2020 happened, um, I had that phone call that said, listen, we, I want to meet with you. I want to talk to you. So I had opportunities. So it wasn't necessarily, there was sadness about that moment that was going to end, that things were about to change. But I also knew that going forward, I had some protection with a contract that was going to pay me that I has, I was not financially concerned in any way. It was more about, okay, I don't know what this next opportunity is going to look like. So there was some, uh, there were few nerves, but it, it was more trying to deal with the emotions of what I've known for the last seven years, my daily routine is, is about to be drastically changed, and perhaps will never return. Uh, but it was after I was a about 10 years in a job as a, as the news director that I referred to earlier in this conversation uh, that I finished a shift was called to an office. As soon as I saw the two managers, I went, Oh, I already told you your first offer is never going to be good enough. And I'm not signing anything till I talk to a lawyer. <laughs> and that for me was a little bit different because that was my whole life. I, I had spent every bit of my energy invested in that. And it was, I felt that was defining who I was as a human being. Uh, so sitting at home, you know, and it's kind of a weird situation where, yeah, I was on the radio yesterday. Today, the radio is still there. I'm not a part of it. That was for me a bit more challenging. And I spent, you know, a good few weeks, as I used to say, uh, cooking and, and making rolls and making bread and, and the bread went away and the rolls all stayed for a while. Uh, <laughs> but that to me was okay. That define that was a defining moment because I said, okay, from this moment on, I can never let someone else dictate my journey. I can't rely on others to make the decisions that are best for me because they'll only make the decisions that are best for their situation for whatever reason. Uh, so for that, from that moment on, whenever I'd had a student or, or a journalism student that I was as a mentor or working with as a, a, a co-op student, I would tell them the same thing. Plot your, try and come up with and define where your career should go, where you'd like to see it go, and then do what you need to do in order to make that happen. If you rely, if you get comfortable and if you rely on other people to, to uh, plot your path, they'll always do what's best for themselves and not necessarily for you. So for me, yeah, it wasn't easy, but it was, uh, it, I took what I could from that, learn from it, and, and then made my decisions accordingly. Although, in the end, somebody else made a decision that was outside of my control that dictated my future, brought in part because the pan, of the pandemic. And I'm not saying it was because of the pandemic, but it was because of the, what the what was the result of that, which is a, a lack of uh, businesses and revenue and all that, that came along. There was no real way to look at it any other way is that, you know, the, the industry changed drastically because of what had happened and was ongoing for, you know, a year and a, and a bit. So completely, it was ongoing and it was the unknown ongoing, right? What did they say in the be beginning with the pandemic? Hey, we're going to be shut down for two and a half weeks yeah. or two weeks. Flatten the curve, <laughs> flatten the curve. So, you know, I think it's super relatable to a number of people who have dealt with a number of things, seen it with their families, seen it themselves, seen it at school. You know, online learning is a great thing when the purpose and design was online learning, right? Uh, online learning is... Um, not a good thing, in my opinion, when it is the thing that we do um, because like we have to and we're here and we're going to make the best out of it. Um, I'm I'm still I'm reflecting on that um, and I hope I contributed to part of the solution. And uh, it, it really is one of those things where you really just have to lay it on straight with learners and lay it on straight and just speak to things as it is. We did the best that we had and nobody knows what what that what that blueprint should look like or did look like 